Hello, welcome to this CMC Markets trading update. Uh, it's myself, Jasper Lawler. We're on the 15th of November 2016. Now, this is a look ahead to the, the autumn statement, the first one for Chancellor Philip Hammond since taking over in the wake of the Brexit vote. And so what I've got on the screen here is just a summary of some of the major UK assets that we typically trade on the CMC Markets platform. Uh, namely, the main highlighted graph being the FTSE 100, the UK 100 as we trade it. Um, but also down the bottom half of the screen here, you probably didn't find it too difficult to guess that this is the, the British pound versus both the euro and the US dollar. And then we have the FTSE 250, slightly underperforming the main benchmark there. And then we also have gilts. Now, what we're trying to assess is can this autumn statement materially change some of the moves in the markets that we're seeing at the moment? Now, naturally, it's the economics that this statement could really affect. And so it's more likely to be the impact on, on gilt and, and the British pound that we could see. Now, there's been a lot of talk, particularly in the wake of the US election of infrastructure spending. Um, Philip Hammond has already abandoned George Osborne's uh, target of, a, uh, of balancing the books by 2020, uh, giving himself a bit of room for manoeuvre for spending. Now, were that, be, were that to be a material increase in spending, you know, that could theoretically be a boost to uh, British GDP um, and uh, a boost to certain areas of the stock market. So certain companies, big blue chip companies can gain, that could be a benefit to the, the FTSE 100. You could argue that the FTSE 250 actually could start to make up some of this underperformance if it, if it was UK firms that were to benefit from this extra government spending. Uh, but overall, the forecast is for the British pound, um, uh, sorry, for inflation to, to move higher and for growth to move lower. That's what most of the major institutions are forecasting for next year. And we've actually got the idea that there could actually be a 25 billion pound black hole. So that in itself does somewhat limit uh, what the what the chancellor can do here in terms of spending. So we're probably not going to get the, the big spending boost that really could jolt the British pound higher or, or feasibly you know, such a large bout of spending that would actually make international wor uh, investors worried about the state of uh, the UK finances, perhaps even bring about calls for a, um, uh, a downgrade from rating agencies. That would certainly be something that impacts guilt. That's not likely on the cards. So then we're probably now looking at um, what specific measures within here can, can, uh, can really impact the market. Um, I think overall what we've got to look at here is probably more a statement of intent rather than any big material changes. We've got to look at the, the overall context of this is that we're looking at Article 50 being triggered by the end of March next year. The Chancellor doesn't really want to rock the boat. And so probably more going to be a, a taster of what's to come in, in the, the budget next year rather than big material changes. Um, obviously a cut to the corporation tax would be a big overall boost, but that doesn't seem likely. He's signaled that he's just going to keep things on the path towards 17% corporate tax rate from 20 at the moment, but not going down to 15 as suggested by George Osborne. Um, stamp duty, um, that would obviously be something that impacts the, uh, the home builders. Now, there is talk of a plan to produce a, a fund for smaller family-run type home builders. This would arguably be a slight net negative for the, the big listed home builders. So I think overall, probably that's not going to be a big winner here unless we do get those stamp duty changes. Um, where else could tax cuts come if we're looking away from spending? Well, consumers have been holding up quite well. Um, still, even though we're looking at higher inflation in the future, uh, prices are still low at the moment. So <clears throat> probably not a need for a cut to, to VAT, although we'd all like to see it, obviously. VAT is probably going to stay at 20%. It's not likely to drop to an emergency 17.5% or 15% like we saw in the financial crisis. Um, and so that, you know, that would obviously be a boost to retailers where we to see something like that. Equally, a uh, cut to business rates, that would materially impact uh, some of the, the retailers have brick and mortar stores, you know, supermarkets, um, and then to a lesser extent that the DOA chains, the, the electronics retailers uh, that also have a bit of an online presence as well. Uh, so overall here, 
is this statement going to maturely affect the changes that we're seeing at the moment? Um, there's a big drop in the bond market taking place at the moment. Can this statement change that? No. There's a, a move higher in stocks, um, a, a general belief in uh, you know, a US-led infrastructure boom. This can contribute to that on a UK side. Um, if the, the UK joins the, the Trump revolution in, in higher move away from monetary policy to fiscal policy, you know, that in itself can also boost the British pound. So we're seeing evidence of a slight bottom being put in here in a, in a British pound after, you know, jumping as much as 20% year to date against the euro. Um, we're pulling away from that parity mark. So, you know, maybe this can be the beginnings of a, uh, a bottom for the British pound and uh, potentially depending on how UK focused and how um, boosting this budget can be, you know, we actually might see an address and address all of this uh, um, FTSE 100, FTSE 250 outperformance here, a move higher in the pound, generally uh, hurts the FTSE 100 more than it hurts the FTSE 250. Equally, some spending boost, uh, maybe away from the big projects like Heathrow and HS2, but towards smaller projects that uh, more local companies, smaller you take, uh, FTSE 250 companies can benefit from. You know, again, that would be uh, readdressing that balance. So I hope that was uh, hope that was useful. Um, just a quick snapshot here of you know just the the overall economic environment here, um, how this this um, uh, this autumn statement can can generally boost these overall markets without digging in too much into the nitty gritty because I think probably this uh, this statement isn't going to go into the finer details with many many changes that we're used to with George Osborne. And I think this again will be more of a statement intent from from Philip Osborne with maybe more concrete changes to come um, in the spring next year once we've got that Article 50 trigger out of the way. Well, thank you very much. Good luck with trading. It's Jasper signing out.